Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, many of you know me as someone who exclusively plays Explorer on Arena. Today we're going to be mixing that up just a little bit by playing Sealed today, and I'm making some more videos on Limited as I build up my collection with the new set. Um, hopefully I can get you guys ready for whenever you start to do your own limited uh, drafting. So um, in the interest of that, I'm going to try and uh, get these videos uploaded as quickly as possible for you. So a lot of this will be unedited footage. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's see how we do. Okay, so we get six packs. Okay. Got some good stuff. Oh, wow, yeah, we get some... Honestly, I didn't even know that we get some... Um, I guess this is just... Maybe they throw in some of the um, Phyrexian Praetors. Uh, I didn't know that we could get that. That's awesome. Already looking like we might be playing some red-green, maybe? Let's just see what all, uh, what all we got here. So, general rule of thumb, playing... Um, playing limited is you want to follow a uh, you want to follow a strategy that's called bread. So you're looking uh, for you're looking to prioritize um, bombs and then removal, anything with evasion, uh, some kind of advantage, and then uh, dudes. So um, we're gonna prioritize the the best things, bombs. Um, we're gonna try and put in as much removal as we can. And then kind of go down the list and so on. So, looks like one of our rares, um, it's a three drop, four, four, comes into play with five oil counters on it. You remove an oil counter to give it uh, vigilance and menace, or you can pay two, remove two counters, so it gets plus two, plus two. And if you pay three and remove three, then you can destroy an artifact or enchantment. Um, that's pretty good. I kind of like the idea of playing red green here. Um, this card's absolutely insane. You basically, at the beginning of your upkeep, um, can discard a card from your hand to destroy a permanent. Or, well, a non-land permanent. As long as that permanent's mana value is less than or equal to the mana value of the discarded card. Uh, the sword is crazy, too. I mean, it's card advantage and ramp. Uh, gives you evasion. That's, I mean, it's, it's a little costly. But, uh, I mean, anyone who's ever played the swords in any format knows it's pretty good. Um, I definitely want to play this in, in this in this format. So, did I get any other cards from Kaldheim? I don't think I would have. That, that wouldn't make any sense because this should just be... Yeah, one. Yeah, I wonder why I, I got that. Maybe there's like a, a one in so many chances of... Uh, of getting these Phyrexian Praetors. So, I don't know. I, I say we start there. Let's start with Vorinclex. Play that for sure. Uh, this card's really good, so uh, we might try to prioritize um, maybe red-green oil counters, which um, is, I mean, that's definitely a uh, an archetype. We're gonna put in our bomb rares, of course, and then the rest of the deck, uh, we're gonna try and play some removal. So let's see what all we have here. This is removal. Uh, kind of. I mean, artifact and enchantment removal is not always the best in limited, but uh, when it comes stapled to a two mana three two that can also proliferate, uh, you. I mean, you absolutely play this. This is a uh, it's a bear that comes into play with oil counters. Remove an oil counter. Target creature gets plus two plus two, but you can only do that as a sorcery. It's still a, I mean, two mana two two is really good in limited. There's some removal, so we'll play that. Destroy an artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. If its mana value is three or less, you can prol proliferate. Um, let's see. You're in a flash. ETBs. If the enchanted creature has toxic, that creature gains hexproof until end of turn. Uh, I mean, otherwise, it just gets plus two, plus two. It's not bad. It's a, it's a combat trick. Plague Nurse, forming a 3-4, Toxic 2, each other creature you control, Toxic gains Toxic 1 until end of turn. It's kind of cool, so you can kind of double up on some of your, your Toxic synergies. Hood 
creature gets plus four, plus four, and trample. It's kind of a lot of mana for that, though. Let's see. You have combat on your turn. The next time target creature would deal combat damage, prevent that damage. Makes mites. Yeah. Card's good, but I don't think it's it's worth us giving up like all these other bomb rares that we got. Probably this. Mana fixing even in two colors is good. That's mana fixing two. It's not terrible. It's two mana two one with toxic one. Obviously, I mean you prefer not to play one toughness creatures if you can help it. Three mana two three. Ribskiff. Ribskiff is pretty good. I mean, four mana draws a card when it ETBs, um, and then it, it has Toxic as well. But you got a crew three for it. Let's see. Our creature control with Toxic deals combat damage to a player. Player gets an additional poison counter. Our creature control with Toxic gets death touch. So that opens us up to playing black if we want it. Same thing here. Could end up playing Jund. Charforger ETBs, make a 1-1. One, one. Another creature artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put an oil counter on it, and then you move three and exile the top card. Okay. Or I guess we could play play Teamer. Cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on it. Which blue likes to have oil counters and things too. So we got some options here. Um I think for now I'm gonna put in my bears. I've got my removal. One three, you can sack it to proliferate. Incubation sack's pretty good actually. It might help to put things in that can proliferate as well. Thirsting roots doesn't seem terrible. I don't know if that's exactly the kind of card that we'd want in this in this deck. Let's see, two mana, zero three, add one mana of any color. When it becomes tapped, exile target card from a graveyard and put an oil counter on it. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of having uh, Grave Hate on a mana dork. And then it becomes a 2 mana 3-3 three, three at some point in the game. Might be a little slow though. We'll, we'll think about it. Let's see what we have in red. So... I mean, th these cards are always good. You definitely play this. Free from Flesh. One mana, plus two, plus two, put two, two oil counters on it. I feel like that could do some work. Hex Gold Slash, uh, not much you have to say about that card. It's absolutely nutty. You, I mean, you totally play that in any red deck. ETB is two oil counters on it. Remove an oil counter. Loot. Might play that. Barbed Batter Fist. Um, sort of buffs that creature. Comes into play, makes a 2-2 a two -two all on its own. Except it'd be a 3-1 being equipped. Blazing Crescendo, plus 3, plus 1 for 2. Exile top card until the end of your next turn. You can play that card. It's, that's pretty good. That That's advantage. So that's the third tier of what you're looking for in, in priority of cards you you uh, you draft. 3 mana, 2, 3 with Menace. Enchantment spells cost 1 less to cast. I don't think we play uh, any enchantments in this deck. Activated abilities of equipment that target it cost one less. It's kind of cool. It's got menace. It's not terrible. We got slow bad. Sack an artifact. Add an amount of red equal to its mana value. Sack. Uh, spend this mana only to cast artifacts or activate abilities of artifacts. Okay. I don't know if we're going to be sacking many artifacts in this deck. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Nothing else. It could be just a three mana three three, which isn't always terrible. Four mana three three with haste. ETBs. You make a one one uh, for and goblin. Okay. Let's see. Hazardous blast deals one damage to each creature your opponent's control, and none of them can, them can block. Be pretty good if uh, we were super low to the ground, but I don't know if we're going to be that low, because I mean. Well, actually, it clears all the all the mites, but I think we have this for that, so might not need that. 
kind of expensive for a four mana four two. I mean, I guess it's an equipment that you can uh, equip to something else in the future. Um, five mana deal five, usually pretty good. Short equipment equipment's pretty good in this format. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and play that. I'm a little bit hesitant to play a third color, but uh, I don't think it would hurt to look at what our options are here. Um, spell bomb in blue is really good. Let's see. Got a two mana two one that uh, sort of makes combat a little bit easier. Poison counters. I don't know if we're gonna care about poison counters too much. We might. No, this might just be a. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know if we're gonna be playing hardly much toxic. So really, this rib skiff might even get taken out. Yeah, because I think that we're just going to be going pretty much classic uh, red, green, and, and limited, which is pretty much just like play dudes, play removal, uh, a little bit of fight spells here and there. Um, honestly, this foreign clex is going to be pretty sweet if we end up playing against like um, any poison counters decks. Because like it literally shuts down proliferate um, for like anything that like our opponents try to like add counters to for. Because foreign clex, I think, rounds up. One or more counters on a permanent or player, they put half as many rounded down. So yeah, I mean yeah, hopefully we can we can see that in action. I think we I think we play this safe. I mean, if we wanted to play black, what would that look like? Um dress is not really good. We'd get like an annihilating glare. Light belly rat's pretty good. Uh offer immortality is a really good combat trick. Let's see. I think Necrosquito is not bad. One one for each oil counter on it. I mean that's that's a pretty decent bomb. Um don't really care so much about toxic in this deck. And then this would be a five mana uh four four that proliferates when it dies. Or ETBs. Uh we, we don't really have enough in black, I don't think. Not not to justify like the awkwardness of playing a third color. So I think now we just fill out our deck. Um Let's see, this is basically removal and advantage. I'm gonna play that. Um, this isn't good enough removal for me to consider it removal. Thirsting roots might not be terrible since we can proliferate all of the uh, oil counters that we get. Although, honestly, I, I think this might be main deckable. I, I might try it, see how it goes. Um, because I really wouldn't mind even, I mean, hitting like a like a might with this like one one artifact might. Um, it's not really like ideal, but like you can kind of assume you're gonna go up against some number of mites in like most most matchups, and so then you can just proliferate like all the oil counters and stuff on here. So, um, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and take Ribskiff out. I mean, it, it, it literally would be the only creature in this deck that would be uh, putting poison counters on our opponent. So. I wouldn't mind having a little more proliferate in this deck, I think. Let's see. We have nine creatures? Yeah, it's more creatures here. Let's go ahead and add this guy. We'll add slow bad just to kind of fill out our curve here. This will basically be a creature and uh, I don't know. I don't know how much that neg one is going to hurt the toughness on our creatures, but um, I think that we can risk it. It's 
see, we're at 40. Play 17 lands, which is kind of a lot, but uh, I, I normally play 16 lands, honestly, because um, I think the number of times that I end up getting mana flooded uh, is, is, I mean, it's far more often than the times whenever I get uh, like mana screwed. But um, being that we're playing Foreign Clex, Masticor, Molten Rebuke, uh, even like the salt, like we have enough like advantage in this deck that I think that we can kind of get away with playing the 17 lands. I hope that's not like famous last words, but uh, I mean, I am going to go ahead and try 17 lands in this deck. I mean, take another look at my curve real quick. Um, you really want to care about your curve. So, uh, two drops are arguably the most important uh, thing in your curve. Um, we have five one drops, which is basically like removal and. Uh, and like incubation sack, uh, free from flesh, it's like a combat trick. Um, but we do have a lot of two drops, which is going to be really good for like just establishing some like early board and then playing removal to like get, get the damage through. Three drops, you want to have a decent number of those as well. Really interesting that we don't have any uh, four drops, uh, and then our five drops I think are uh, what just removal, right? So we have like mass no we have master core and then we have the removal spell this is basically a five drop if you want to think of it that way but it can be split up between turns um and our six drops two of those six drops are actually going to cost a lot less because uh, it has the um cost reduction and then vorinclex obviously is a six drop i i feel pretty good about this um i honestly like if our first game is like we just get flooded i think i'm going to go ahead and take one of these lands out and go down to 16. but let's see how it does yeah, yeah, we got some stuff going on here. Um, it's good that we get to play this in turn one, where the coming to play tap doesn't actually like it isn't actually detrimental to us. Um, I guess it might have been nice to play this in turn one, but it doesn't really come online until turn four anyway. Let's see, what are you? One one death touch, toxic one. Okay. I don't think I'd mind losing the token from this. Couldn't play that. I mean, something's gonna trade with this 1-1. One, one. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. Kind of the main reason why you don't want to play X-1s. They, uh, they die to this thing. Let's see when it... ETBs. Okay, so it's already done its its ability. It's an artifact. Um, but we won't be proliferating anything, so... What do I want to play here? I think I am going to go ahead and just play this. six around we can oh hey they got this too that's cool uh yeah no blocks all right so we're at two poison uh we want to keep ourselves off the three poison because black white cares about corrupt um or corrupted this unfortunately has pro our deck uh so we're a hundred percent gonna have to uh canopy that We need to keep ourselves off of Corrupted, though. Although I don't know if there's any real good way for us to do that. Um, let's go to combat. Swing in. Yep. And let's go ahead and remove that now. We'll smith the one on, on our own creature. Will not be proliferating the uh, poison counter on us. Two four with menace and toxic two. Okay. Just play two creatures. That would help. We'll play them on the second main phase though, because that's the ideal way to actually play this game is swing and then 
play cards out of your hand on your second main phase. Unless you could play something that matters in, in the first main phase. So I give this thing Vigilance and Menace. Um, I could also give it... Plus two, plus two. I think we just go ahead and do Vigilance and Menace for now. I don't think I'd really mind... Two for one in here. I mean, that is kind of the point of, like, playing your bombs. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and... This thing's not an artifact, is it? Could actually destroy this. No. Let's go ahead and just give it, uh... Plus two, plus two for now. And then we'll do that trade. And then we can go and play Incubation Sack. Wouldn't mind pumping out some 3-3s here. Okay, so we are now officially at three poison counters, so we are officially corrupted. Let's go ahead and play this land. Whatever land we get is going to come into play tapped, so let's play yeah, going to play these and then we will activate Terramorphic Expanse on our opponents and stuff. Ah, yep. Memories are problem. That's good. Looks like they're going to return the uh, Death Toucher to their hand. Yep, they're not going to swing because they don't want to lose their 3-2. We have a 4-4 that we need to deal with now. Let's get another source of green. Mold Rebuke is good. Um, let's us destroy the 4-4. Although we can also destroy the 4-4 through combat. Don't do that. We'll swing in. They're gonna double block. We're gonna prioritize killing the Paladin. So it's Blazing Crescendo, the Engraver. Okay, we get a land. Not bad. Play land and white bait the sack. I think I'm gonna play the death touch creature. I really wouldn't mind top decking uh, Vornclex here in just a minute. Ooh, Phyrexian Arena. That's risky. Phyrexian Arena is, like, so good, but uh, the, the downfall of it is that you can't turn it off. So, I mean, if I can get our opponent even down to, like, three, uh, I mean, that's going to put our opponent on a clock through their own Phyrexian Arena. So, um... <clears throat> Let's see. Let's go and put the batter fist on. I think the steward. We're just gonna try and get him for uh, three here. I feel like our opponent's going to block at least one. Yeah, man, I gotta stop getting, uh, giving my creatures, uh, one toughness. I think this is fine, though. <clears throat> Don't 
definitely want to keep that card in the back of your mind. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I heard a lot of people kind of talk about it when uh, the set was getting spoiled, and um, I mean, it, people kind of go back and forth on it. I mean, in limited, you really don't want to play X once. So if your opponent's good, not playing X once, unlike me. Uh, I mean, the card is kind of just a combat trick that you hope will get there. The proliferate's nice too. Uh, Sinu Dancer, that's another really good card. So that card gets to tap cre creatures down for free. So we're seventh land. Um, we will activate this for four, and then we'll play a slow bed, and then pass it back. So our opponent's drawing cards, they're getting advantage. Arena is really good. I just don't know, like, I mean, you gotta be really careful with it in limited. I mean, if you're playing it, you kind of hope to have something that can, like, gain you life, too. Or you just hope that you can win before the Phyrexian Arena kills you. Play a lot of Commander, and, um, this card, I remember, used to get played in Commander a whole lot back in the day. Um, let's see. Chose not to get a basic. When it dies, make a might. Okay. This thing's gonna tap down one of our creatures. Let's go ahead and start by drawing a card. Master Core's really good. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So we can play the Master Core or the Removal. I mean, if we play the Master Core first, then we can we can just discard the Molten Rebuke and deal five to something anyway. Let's go ahead and just start by going to combat. Dune Mover can't kill anything on its own, so I feel good about that. That Hive Master is 100% going to trade with something. Tap down slow bad. Let's go ahead and swing in. Yep. Okay. Let's play land. Play Master Core. Hope our opponent can't answer it. That's that's really good. So I'll target creature or enchantment. If it wasn't an aura, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a one one. Ah. Just give up already. Just casually uh Yeah, okay. We're gonna discard this. We're gonna deal five to the center dancer. Couldn't they have... Oh, they needed the mana for it. Okay. Uh, we are not going to play this. Because we're going to want to discard it uh, next turn. So. Let's go to combat. Deal some damage to Kaya. The Might can't block. So. I was just going to jump with that thing. Back off. Um, can I activate this as a sorcery? So let's go ahead and do that now. And... I am going to go ahead and equip this to slow bad. I'll pass it back. That Kai is going to do a lot of damage to us, and it's going to gain them a bunch of life. Blending Wrapper, it might be one of the best commons in the set. It's, I mean, it's, it's so good just being able to like same turn it comes down, giving uh, flying all your creatures with toxic. Okay. We're gonna discard this. D destroy the might. Fortunately, we couldn't destroy the raptor with that. We're gonna hold on to this land. Let's see. So, can we kill Kaya? We can kill Kaya. 
So yeah, we're, we're gonna do that. Wonder if the opponent's gonna trade. Nice. Kind of interesting that they didn't hold on to that. Uh, I mean, yeah, they got to remove the golem, but uh, they could have just killed us, I think. This wasn't part of the deal. Um. Yeah. Bonum might just have us here. If they have another uh, pump spell, that's uh, that's gonna be it. Yep. Nice. All right. That's four. All right. Let's go on to the next game. Okay, this hand could be really sweet or terrible. It just kind of depends on what we get off the top. Normally, I wouldn't keep a hand like this, but uh, I mean, bombs like this. If I mean, if we draw anything other than like lands, I think that we're gonna be okay. I don't know how I got this. I gotta look into that later. I wonder if just like everybody got a Phyrexian Praetor as part of like their uh, their sealed. Dang. But I went down to five. Yeah, see, like, this is gonna be sweet. So, we got a bear. We'll play the sword on turn three, and then turn four we'll connect. Tablet of completion. Cool. Draw a card. I feel only if it has five more counters. All right. Let's go and play the engraver. Plays uh, Flesh Cutter. Creature attacks, they get a Might. Equip cost for three. Alright. Um, let's see, would I rather play these two or the sword? I think I'm gonna go ahead and just play the sword. I think we're just gonna get in for one. I think Tablet can officially start producing mana. Yep. And then whoever has three more oil counters on it, then they can start drawing cards. Which is going to be some really good value if that comes online. Okay, it looks like opponent's playing Orzhov. Um, normally Orzhov hopes to have at least three poison counters on by now. Um, let's go ahead and equip. Let's see what our opponent does. If they have removal, then we just play another bear. Do we want to loot? I think that's the real thing. Um, I don't know what we want to discard though. Weirdly enough, our hand is pretty good. Um, feels weird giving up a free loot though. I don't know. I just see us like top decking a land and then just like discarding it and effectively having done nothing. Even if we got an on land, I don't think we'd want to discard it. Okay, let's go and play the steward. Would have been nice to be able to uh, start accumulating some value here, but uh, I think that we'll live. It's just crazy that this exiles the top two cards of your library, a and it ramps you if like you have like the extra land. I mean, it's so good. Creature gets O2 and has Toxic 1. Alright. Let's go ahead and equip. Go to combat. Okay, so we connect. Hopefully, we just get like two lands off the top. I want to get this. Uh, there we go. See, like, you get to play both lands if you just didn't like play a land for the turn. 
Um, it's just, it's ridiculous. I'm going to play the sack. Um, if the opponent tries to do some damage to the steward or something, then uh, we'll have a combat trick. We can also add uh, counters, uh, oil counters to it if we need to. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get Born Clicks down before the tablet of completion got to 5, but... I mean, honestly, this game might just be over. If the opponent has removal, it's it's going toward that Vorinclex, without a doubt. Okay, so we gotta land. Let's go ahead and just play the Vorinclex. I wouldn't be surprised if the opponent just concedes to that, honestly. I I probably would, to be honest. In a in a format that cares about like toxic counters and stuff, oil counters, like it. I mean, Vorinclex pretty much shuts down both of those. Um, oh, but they let they didn't put the uh, oil counter on uh, tablet. That's awkward. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna learn a harsh lesson. Opponents <clears throat> at five. Um, we get to exile two cards off the top. Play one, and then I don't see us playing the free from flesh. Let's go ahead and just play this. So that's, um, oh yeah, it's got pro red. It's gonna play that just so we get the card advantage. We'll see a card that we can play next turn, which is, it's pretty good. <laughs> I don't mind uh, being able to just deal one point of damage to like some random X one that our opponent plays. Feel really bad for them. Like they didn't get to put like a single creature on board this entire game. I mean, I know it's not over, but it might as well be. But, like we have. Like removal here, we have removal. I mean, we got like a pump spell here. This thing. Oh, annihilating there. Nice. So, what, what's funny is that we can't actually win the game here because our creature has pro red due to our sword. Um, I'm not going to complain about that, though. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and start with combat. Exile top two. Click land in a creature. Um, go ahead and do both of those. So Tablet's finally coming online. Our opponent's going to be able to draw a card for free, but I don't think it's going to be enough because our opponent's at one. And, uh, I mean, they're basically going to need, like, a board wipe or they're going to need, like, I mean, basically three three pieces of removal here, which uh, seems pretty unlikely to do on, uh, I mean, they're going to draw a card here. They'll have four mana, maybe five if they play land. So, yeah, I mean... We just, it's just a combination of us like getting way too much value and then our opponent having the unfortunate um, lack of creatures to put on the board. I guess that's kind of the danger though, of, like playing too many of like these equipments that like don't make creatures all on their own. Go, yeah. So there's the creatures that our opponents needed, yeah. Yep. We'll take it. This hand's pretty bad. Um, we have Incubation Sack and like nothing else. I think we're gonna go ahead and mulligan. Oh yeah, okay. A little bit better though, at least because like, I mean we can at least play things now. I hate to give up the Slash, but uh, I, honestly between the Slash and the Ravager, I'd rather have the Ravager. That's good. I mean, it's just a one mana one one, but uh, when it dies, you can deal some damage to any target. Um, it's like our opponent could basically just like shock a creature of ours if they want to by uh, 
equipping the battle fist to this camp because it gives plus one neg one, so this camp would become a two power zero toughness creature, so it would die immediately. And then, like, they could shock our can canker bloom that way if they wanted to. Okay. Could just make a trade here. Um, why do we want to do this? I was expecting a combat trick, to be honest, to pump the scamp, but yeah, he's just gonna make that trade right there. Yeah, played Nasprite, 2-3 with Menace, um, equip costs, cost less. Yeah, let's go and play another Canker Bloom. Things uncommon. It's kind of funny out, too. See what else they got. <laughs> Ossification. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and destroy the artifacts. They get in for four. Yeah, still no red. It's unfortunate. I mean, I'm only getting my first hand trying to find another source of red. Couldn't find it. And it's like, get on to six. And it's like, well, how much do I really want to risk mulliganing to get the fixing I need? Um, and at some point, you just you do your mulligan once and you hope for the best. Uh, yeah, can't let our opponents keep on dealing damage to us. So we'll make that trade. Swooping Lookout, I'm still not sold on, um, but I guess like with equipment, it gets a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna play this guy. A Vigilance and Menace could be good, but we're definitely on the backswing here, so our opponent's gonna get in for three. We're gonna go down to seven. Getting a little close to being dead here. I think I am going to go ahead and remove the Aspirant to try and slow down our opponent. I'm not sure what the last two cards are in their hand, but I'm going to hope for the best and say that they're both lands. Also, we can't block with Miglas, so uh, we went ahead and swung. We're at six. I'm gonna play this. We're gonna go to combat first. We're not gonna give vigilance because at the moment we don't see any um, creatures that it can block. Uh, our opponent might play something with haste, but um, it's kind of hard to account for that. Um, I mean, it's like we're not gonna give up four points of free damage on the off chance that our opponent plays something with haste. Okay, indoctrination agent. Uh, let's see. Probably return the lookout if he wants to to make a, a might. Not sure if that's the best play. I mean, our opponent should have swung for one first since it. I mean, oh, it's ossification. Okay, yeah, nice. It's a little awkward though. They have to ossify the uh, the miglas, otherwise I can just destroy it. Uh, that resolves. Okay, get him for one. Okay, play seventh land, not the best, not the worst. Um, this thing is vigilance, so we are gonna go ahead and swing. All 
I really don't see us playing this defensively because our 5-5 five five is already an effective blocker. So went ahead and played that. Um, let's play this. Opponent is going to get in for at least two points of damage here. They're going to deal one. Oh, we can't block. Okay, yeah, nice. Yep, we were uh, one man off from getting that 3-3. Three, three. That's alright. Alright, game four. We are currently one and two. Uh, last game was a little rough on the mana base. Um, I'm liking this one a little bit better, so let's go ahead and play this. Play the land tapped on turn one, of course. I think we'll go ahead and play... Let's go and play the Canker Bloom. It's a prime removal target if our opponent has removal. Otherwise, it's going to deal a good, good amount of damage here. We're hoping to get a third land to get the sword online. Looks like the opponent does have removal for it. Yep. Okay. We did get the third land, so that's great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play the sword, because if we get a land next turn, then we can play creature and equip it with the sword. Looks like opponent is playing Abzan, so they're a three color deck, which the sword might be decent against if they play a lot of uh, green creatures. I think I'm going to go ahead and play... I'm trying to think of a reason why like we might care about having a two toughness creature versus a three toughness. I don't think it's going to matter enough, so let's go ahead and play this. And then... If our opponent has that two mana indestructible uh, combat trick, I kind of want to play around that. Let's go ahead and remove this now. I know it's an instant. Could have played it on our opponent's turn, but uh, I don't think it's worth the risk. Are, is our opponent playing four colors right now? What in the heck? <laughs> they just they couldn't make up their mind on uh, on what colors to play. Um, I really hope they're not playing five colors. Do not play five colors in this format. Um, okay. We're going to go ahead and equip. This thing is a sorcery. Our creature can get through because it has pro green. So we're gonna get through for four. Um, we can play these cards this turn. Oh, that's right, I can't do a, a fight. Um, okay, that's fine. A little awkward. I think I would have preferred to uh, get at least one land there. That's alright. Yeah, probably force. Good. They're gonna proliferate. But we don't have a toxic counter on us. Yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. Okay, so let's fight first this time. That's not going to be enough, though. Um, we're going to hold on to our, to our fight spell. Go and equip. Get in for three. Okay, so there's, there's our lands. Let's go and play this. And then we'll pass it back. So they are going to be able to get through with that might, which is going to be able to kind of start their proliferation train. Oh, that's pretty good. I didn't even know that was a card. One mana draw two if they uh, if your opponent's corrupted. They're going to return their chorus, and they can proliferate. Okay, we're at four. And then they're going to be able to... Oh, prophetic Prism. A little surprised they didn't play their chorus there, and then pay the two to proliferate 
Another toxic counter. Ravager is going to be pretty good. So, that was a really good draw. Let's go ahead and play the Ravager. But I'm just going to get another Might. Okay. We're going to go ahead. Let's swing first. Get it for three. Exile top two cards for our library. Yep, there's another pit fight, so that's kind of why you go to combat first. Because um, otherwise, that, that removal spell would have just gone to waste if I played the one out of my hand. Okay. So we're at four toxic, uh, four, four poison counters. Um, opponents played a pacifism on our creature. Not bad. There's a battlefield of three oil counters on it. Moving oil counter, scribe one. Okay. You can still use this to remove a creature. Let's start by playing. Let's get in for three first. Unless the opponent just wants to block. Yep, that's fine. We land and kind of want to close out this game as fast as possible. Um, so we're going to play that. We'll discard the predation to remove something on the opponent's side of the field. Um, Oh, okay, opponent just conceded. Nice. Alright, two and two. Yeah, this isn't terrible. It's not great either. We are on the draw, so we're more likely to see a third land here at some point. Start off with the sack. Gonna play Kanker Bloom. So far, we haven't removed all three counters from the sack. Um, I was thinking like this card gets a lot better with Proliferate, which like duh, obviously, but um, you really might not have to proliferate this in most of your games, um, since like I mean. You're probably not going to remove the initial three anyway. All right, so opponent swing with one one into our three two. It's an obvious trap, and very little opportunity cost. Um, I'm okay with taking one on the off chance that, uh, I mean, we had made a mistake and should have blocked. Um, we didn't get a land. It's kind of unfortunate. Can't remember if there's a combat tr trick that untaps a creature. Doesn't look like there there is in their hand, so let's go ahead and play this. I think I really don't mind losing like a three one token. Okay. What are they gonna return? Probably Sinu Dancer? Get another mic? I want to keep our opponent off corrupted, and more importantly, I want to keep ourselves off of 10 poison. So, couldn't make that trade. Feels a little awkward, but. Okay, so there is our third land. Let's play a 4 4. And then we're going to play a little more defensively here since our opponent can get us to 10 poison counters pretty quickly, I assume. And at some point, we can uh, put down the sword and hopefully 
swing in with a 6-6 six, six Vigilant Menace Miglaws. Yeah, opponents totally got a removal spell. Um, you have... It's probably like the uh, the flash enchantment that like gives plus one, plus one. Good we'll do no blocks. Oh, this thing is toxic also. Ah, okay. That's fine. We can live with that. Okay. Yep. So we can't canopy much here. Um, we don't have a whole ton of options. I think I'd rather risk losing Canker Bloom to an attendant and then them having the pump spell anyway. So we're gonna kind of start with that. Let's go ahead and put the batter fist on Canker Bloom. We'll predation. From here to there. And then let's go ahead and just give this vigilance a menace. Um, I, I really would have liked to hold on to the one mana to sack the canker bloom, um, like just in case. But uh, I think I'd rather just be able to hold on to a 4 4 blocker. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's it's gonna go like this. So, <clears throat> what I like about this play is that uh, if they want to keep their attendant alive, they're gonna have to use their combat trick on it, which means that the might won't be killing the Miglas. And we get two poison counters, uh, unfortunately, so that'll turn on uh, Corrupted for our opponent. Yeah, but I'm thinking hard. Let's see what we got. So now we have a 5-6 attendant to deal with. Does it keep Hexproof? No, it's just until the turn. Yeah. Okay, so... We can canopy... The Maze's Mantle, which puts the attendant in range for a removal spell. That dancer is going to get really annoying. I almost feel like we have to kill it. But then it's like, do we take the risk of them having another uh, combat trick? What do you have on, it? on one green? Yeah, we'll uh, proliferate those. Um. We're at four. Four poison. Yeah. We have to kill the dancer, unfortunately. I mean, that, that dancer is going to do way too much to us. That one green might give it plus two, plus two. Oh, it gives it hexproof? Oh. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That card was about to, uh, I think, just end us, though, so 
Probably better that we get, get it out of the way. Alright, so then we're gonna take, what, five and three poison? Last Blade Mantis. I hear good things about this card too. Two little counters. When it attacks, remove one. Untap it, it gets plus one, plus one. Alright. How do we do this? I feel like we just lose. Give per green, then it just gets tapped down. Yeah, I mean, we could make three three, and we just go down to five, and then up to ten poison. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call it. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and call it. That's alright. Played sealed. You never know what you're gonna get. Um. We went two and three, so not the best record, but uh, still a fun introduction into the uh, limited format for Phyrexia. Yeah, make sure to uh, like and subscribe. I'm at 28 subscribers right now. Once we get up to 30, I'm going to do a uh, free raffle for a pack of Return to Ravnica. Um, every single person whose uh, subscriptions are not set to private, um, that helps me know to even put you in the pool for the draft or for the for the raffle. Um, and uh, I'm gonna try to link at some point my next video somewhere, somewhere up here. Um, and then I'm just gonna get this thing uploaded tonight for you guys. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I will see you guys uh, tomorrow.